Hey, Howard here from 82 Maple, and John from the Bradleys on Catbird Hill recently threw down a challenge in one of his latest video episodes about the top five tractor add-ons video challenge. I think that's what it's called. Well, uh, before I jump into that, two things. Number one, yes, I'm going to respond, but John had some excellent links down below his video I'm not going to duplicate those here. Rather, I'm just going to put in a link to John's video. Check it out. It's worthwhile. And John, I've already watched most, if not all, of the participants you listed, as well as some of the participants that your participants listed. And wow, I've learned a ton. I just couldn't help myself from jumping into this. So let's get going. Right off the top, my number one is these pallet forks. And I agree totally, John. These are totally invaluable. So Coral uses these forks to uh, ferry square bales around to the horses, round bales. Uh, they work perfectly, no need for a bale spear. And she moves fence panels and a whole lot more. They are amazing. From my perspective, I use them to move uh, uh, lumber around, to move logs around. I've got a log deck on there. There's nothing that these forks combined with this 4066 won't tackle. These forks are rated for something over 3,000 pounds. I forget exactly how much, but to me, it's irrelevant because at the pin, I think the 4066 uh, maxes out at around 2200. The amazing things that I like about these Frontier forks on this John Deere is number one, I just have two of these little pins that I pull and I'm on to the next attachment. Number two, they fit everything in the lineup of John Deere compact tractors from the 1000 series to the 4000 series. These forks do really well on the little 1025 over there. I also used them on a 5000 series John Deere that I no longer have. And this extra pin down here, just a shout out to the ingenuity of the folks at Frontier. Uh, this pin fit the 5000 series. Love it, love it, love it. One last little tip here. I always carry a chain on here. That on one end of the chain, I have this sort of uh, a hook which will fit perfectly over the links. On this end, I have a rounded hook so that I can actually use this chain as a bit of a choker uh, as I pull logs out of the deck if I need something that's buried deep. Just checking my notes so I don't miss anything here. And uh, uh, there we go. Okay, we're off to the next item. Number two, let's do this. Love it, love it, love it. The ballast box. The John Deere dealer recommended that I take this. And so, yes, I have uh, liquid in the tires for weight, um, but this is still necessary. I carry a lot of heavy loads. Like I said, round bales on Coral's end, logs and lumber on my end. And my issue with having another attachment, like a blade or something back here, is I work in tight quarters quite often. And you know what? Maybe it's just an age thing, but I get tired of always having my neck cranked around to see what the tail swing of the implement I'm using is going to take out or is putting in danger. So this is uh, 18 inches, uh, 24 inches, 20 inches, I fill it with gravel. Hey, I throw an eight, a short eight foot choker in the top, just in case again, I need to reach deep into the log deck. You can do the math on the weight that that adds, but wow, it's as heavier, heavier than any implement that I attach. And uh, there we go. Another item that I, uh, where my list overlaps John's. These quick attach, or as John Deere calls it, I match, match, and you'll see something from the big tool rack company down there on the old tractor that I inherited from my dad, called something else. But regardless, how do you spell what this thing does? One word, efficiency. 
you flip these handles and boom, drop it and it's unloaded. The handles don't even need to be lifted to hook up to an implement. They can be in the down position. You back up, you line up this center hook here and you just pick up the next implement and you keep moving. You know what? As much as I absolutely, absolutely love operating my equipment, and I think you can see that my passion shows, what I love even more is getting a job done quickly and efficiently and on to the next. That's the type of attaboy that I live for. And uh, uh, these quick attaches make that all possible. Got them on all three tractors here and uh, I wouldn't part with them for anything. And it's number four, the box blade. Hey, this is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to moving earth. I intentionally left the tines in their upright position. The deal is you flip the tine, you pop it up from the bottom. There's two adjustments. One gives you about three inches a dig, the other one about six inches a dig. It loosens the earth. I could go to work right here and we've had dump trucks running back and forth on this and I could tear it up and then you have a choice to make. You can move the loosened earth with the front bucket or you can move it with the box blade. If we look down inside here, we have a great cutting edge in here, but bonus, there's a cutting edge on the other side. So what I've got is a pull push arrangement. The loosened earth, I can pull half of it forward and half of it backwards, then scoop up the windrows with the front bucket. It is crazy good. Before I had an excavator, this is how I did a lot of necessary excavation that I needed to do for landscaping and other leveling purposes. Bonus, um, hey, this is just the right size of space for our recycle bin when I run it out to the road. <laughs> the other thing that it has in common with the ballast box over here, it's one of the more uh, compact implements to have on the back of the tractor for ballast. It's not too wide. I'm not too concerned about where it swings when I'm carrying a heavy load on the front end of the tractor. Hey, speaking of front end of the, uh, the 1025, let's head up here. I've got something else to share. Okay, this is the ratchet rate. This is one mean machine when it comes to loosening a stump, loosening a bunch of willow roots, uh, breaking up hard earth and you know what dollar for dollar it is amazing value coral and i used this our first use of this was on, on about an acre of blackberry bushes uh willows all of that stuff that we were trying to clear to put in a nice outdoor lawn area not a finished lawn area just kind of a uh, an outdoor casual park ambiance and this thing is perfect when it comes to scooping all of that debris into a pile, which we then tie into once the pile is packed, we tie into with the forks and up and over and into the dump trailer. Down here, we have scarifying teeth. And if you don't know what that is, uh, I've got a, a photo in here and it turns hard packed earth like this into corduroy. And that can be for any number of reasons. You might be just wanting to plant, again, that area that's off to the side and you just need to turn up the dirt a little bit. If you don't want the scarifying teeth down here and you prefer a smooth edge, this whole thing flips over. These uh, attachment points are so arranged that you can have these teeth up in here, meaning they're not down here impeding whatever you're doing and you've still got these teeth. You know, what I found is when going up against willows and other things with the bucket, the willow would just slide off to the side of the bucket. This traps it right in there. Now you can push forward, pull it backwards, do whatever. You know what my big concern was in buying this? That these straps would get in the way, they'd get torn up. No, they, they are great uh, when you're using it as intended. It's awesome and uh, yeah, can't say enough about that. Uh, one more thing that we've got going on here now. So this was number five, this is number six. 
uh, trailer balls. We've got various trailers around here. I have uh, a little red uh, pickup box trailer that fits this ball and we use it for ferrying firewood back and forth to our Airbnb, which is located you know, a thousand feet away by road. This is our two and five sixteenths, which moves most of our trailers around here, the flat deck, the horse trailer, the dump trailer. And then we've got a two inch ball for a derelict horse trailer that we have out in the field uh, that we use as a feeding station for the horses. And it needs to be moved from time to time. And you know what, particularly with the dump trailer, when we're doing cleanup or breaking some new ground uh, and clearing it, um, we tend to put push the dump trailer into places where I wouldn't take uh, a vehicle and a trailer. But with the tractor, uh, just drop it on here and away we go. The only thing I, I realize in retrospect that I needed to do, and this bucket is fully 10 years old, I've tweaked the front lip. I needed to have put a half inch steel plate in there and had it properly welded in. That's a project for the future, but hey, that's been an absolute time saver, life saver, efficiency creator. Um, let's keep moving here. We're getting on to the really good stuff. Uh, I meant to tell you, we were on number six with the trailer balls. This is about a top five. Well, you knew I wasn't going to stop at five. I'm going for the essential eight. Okay, extra value here from 82 Maple at Kettner Creek Farm. This is a land plane, or as I call it, the poor man's road grader. This, the magic in this, is these longitudinal stabilizers. And so typically when trying to grade a driveway, otherwise level a lawn area, some other area, the typical rear mount blade creates a porpoising effect. I don't know if you've ever been frustrated with that, but particularly when you get that load of gravel or fill material dumped and you start to level it with the rear mount blade and a bucket, I can tell you it takes more than my level of skill to do that quickly and efficiently. Not with this. And there's two parts to the efficiency. One again, the longitudinal arm, so it prevents the pore poising that you get with a typical rear mount plate on a three-point hit. The second is these blades. The magic in this is that the blades are only about six inches high. So as we get into the bite of the fill, anything that is excess to where I'm floating this blade spills over the top goes to the next blade. If it's still excess, it spills over the top. And so particularly when using it behind our little compact tractor, it doesn't bog the tractor to a halt, provided I have the float set at anything resembling a reasonable level. It just keeps moving. Then I can come back and make that second pass. Uh, it really, is amazing. The area over here where I have these three implement shelters up started out with me leveling it with this, then getting a couple of full truckloads of one inch broken rock drop. Uh, I distributed it only slightly with the front bucket and then went to work with this. And I think it took me something like 30, 35 minutes to level uh, two truckloads into what you see there. And again, maybe you're way better with equipment than I am, but at my skill and experience level, this makes me look way better than I really am. And that brings me to the last of our essential eight items. Uh, this one, the, the old Ferguson tractor has almost become a single purpose unit with this rake mounted on it. We actually take it off very seldom. So it's equally effective at uh, moving loose gravel around and leveling it. I just set a reasonable float. And again, it's not going to bog the machine by building up. Uh, the if As long as it's one inch and under material, uh, it's going to uh, spill through the, uh, uh, the tines on this and uh, but but there's more to it than that 
uh, again, when uh, collecting brush in a recently cleared area, we talked about the um, attachment on the front end of the bucket, the, the, the ratchet rake. And uh, this does a similar job and maybe even more effectively than that. Uh, and so Coral and I are working on restoring an existing horse trail. It's been overgrown. We went up with a chainsaw, we removed some logs, but there is just a mess of branches and other materials strewn around. We don't want to disturb the natural earth uh, floor and rip it all up with the blade. So dragging this rake down will save a ton of hand labor, yet it leaves the soil really intact. It kind of floats over the top and just picks up the loose debris. From there, we can windrow it, load it, do whatever with it. And uh, uh, it all comes out really, really good. And so we use this a lot in spring cleanup or in cleaning up an area of this property that hasn't been cleaned for a while. Uh, the other thing that I realized I hadn't mentioned, just as a last throwaway here, about these uh, this scarifier on the bottom, uh, we have an 800 foot driveway and uh, we get pooling of water during freeze thaw that then turns into glare ice. Nothing better than this than to just back up with weight on the bucket and it corduroys it, turning that slick surface for somebody walking or even for a vehicle into something that has traction. So there you have it, the Essential 8. Okay, so this 82 Maple episode of the Essential 8 is now over because you know what? I could stand here all day and talk to you about the equipment. Uh, but I wanted to say, if you want to see me using these implements in real life, check out the channel. You'll see lots of instances of how I'm using these various attachments exactly as I've described. And there's more. I've got to tell you that checking out the links that John from the Bradleys on Catbird Hill posted truly has made me a better version of myself. But you know what? Can we keep this our little secret? I've learned so much from all of the posts as a result of these five add-ons uh, video challenge. And I wanna let you know in advance, I'm not going to give any of you the credit for any of that, but rather when Coral comes up to me and, and admires my latest tools, techniques, uh, increased efficiencies, I'm just going to take that pat on the back and keep moving. Again, you're not going to get any credit for that. So here we are at 82 Maple. Time to put these eight fingers and two thumbs to work. Off to the horse trails. <laughs>